This is the Plant Yourself Podcast. I'm Howard Jacobson of plantyourself.com. I turned on the radio and I got the BBC News Hour, which is a, a global news program that I think goes to uh, somewhere north of 300 million people around the world on a daily basis. And the announcer was saying they're about to interview um, Paul Curtin, the hench herbivore, about his reaction to Arnold Schwarzenegger's announcement. So all of a sudden, my world is swirling with plant-based weirdness. So a, a bodybuilder from Norwich, England, is talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then I start listening to this bodybuilder, and he is compassionate and kind and intelligent and articulate and soft-spoken and he's talking about his friend his training partner Mr. Universe Barney Duplessis who went vegan and all of a sudden my world just explodes like I've, I've been immersed in arguments about paleo for so long you know it looks like up to me and all of a sudden the world's media and some of the world's uh, most important avatars of masculinity are saying a plant-based diet is, is kind of the ultimate in, in, in masculine caretaking of the planet, in masculine strength as compassion. So I quickly did my research, found Paul Curtin's website, Hench Herbivore, and reached out to him, and he was gracious enough in the midst of this media firestorm that has now uh, engulfed his life in a really good way. He was willing to give me 45 minutes of his time to talk about all this stuff. So without further ado, Paul Curtin, welcome to the Plant Yourself podcast. Thank you very much, Howard. Great to be here. Uh, so your website is Hench Herbivore, hench-herbivore.co.uk. And I asked Correct. you before, I, did not, I do not know what the word hench means. Could you, could you tell us? Because I, I do not think it's an American word. I'm not sure. Well, it's kind of modern vernacular. It means sort of big and muscly. Like a big, a big bodybuilder kind of build. Cool. So I, j I just looked it up on Google, and and they they said they say British informal, strong of a man, strong ah. fit, having well developed muscles. And the sentence they use is, "There's nothing funnier than seeing a really hench guy walking a tiny dog." Yeah, <laughs> that's about right. Yeah, that sums it up. So good. So now we have we have some context on this side of the pond for hench. Um, so <laughs> hench herbivore as opposed to right the. Um, the vegan stereotype of a, of a skinny, long-haired hippie, right? Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm going for, just bringing veganism into the 21st century. Cool. So let's start in the 20th century with your story. So you, you didn't grow up eating a plant-based diet, right? No, I was uh, just a, a typical, you know, standard diet. 28 years ago, got into bodybuilding, and I thought, like everyone else, the more animal products I eat, the quicker I'm going to get big and strong. And to that end, you know, I ended up eating 500 grams of animal protein a day, um, you know, five or so chicken breasts. I'd have um, whey protein with each meal. I'd have casein at night, tuna, steak, you know, all the stuff that you typically we're told, you know, from birth that that's what you need to do if you want to be big and strong. <laughs> well, well, 500 grams. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But I, I want to back up a bit. Tell me why you wanted to be big and strong. Where did that come from? Um, I think like most guys, you know, you kind of, I was never very tough. I didn't know how to stand up for myself. So I wasn't badly bullied at school, but certainly I had my fair share of being picked on and I just didn't like it. <laughs> That's basically it, I guess. Okay. But you know, I think that most of us have some sort of experience of, of either, you know, not being the bully of being bullied. And yeah. and yet most of us don't look like you and never ate 500 grams of, of protein. Yeah, I guess I just overdid it. And the kind of, um, it's that weird thing. There's a phrase for it now, bigorexia. And bodybuilders typically huh. suffer from it. And no matter how big you get, you look in the mirror and you think, oh, I'm not that big. I need to, to do more, you know. It's, it's crazy. I look back now at photos. Well, not as big as I was now because I decided I didn't want to be um, that way. And um, 
I looked ridiculous. I was ridiculously big, but at the time I didn't appreciate it. I really didn't. Mm -hmm. So I understand now how anorexics work, and they look and they can't see how small they are. I get it. You know, I've actually been through the the opposite. Wow, I've never heard of that. Uh, yeah. but I guess I guess you're yeah. on, you're on stage. There's always somebody bigger, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so you so you got into um, was it bodybuilding first or martial arts first? Uh, martial arts first, and then bodybuilding to sort of augment that. And um, just at different stages of my life, I've drifted between the two. Really, I've got outrageously big and then struggled to move, and then I've got lean and fast. But then it's um, it's been up and down all my life. But I've got to the stage now where I've grown out of all the ego. I think through veganism, I found a more spiritual path, and I'm, and now I, I want to have a reasonable physique to just to show, you know. Well, actually, I'm a lot bigger than your average bear. To be fair, I want to show that veganism can support any lifestyle, and you can look amazing and be your best. And I believe a vegan diet is is what it takes. Mm. So we'll, we'll get to vegan, but I'm, I'm it's interesting because I've I know lots of bodybuilders whom you know I think like they could lift a really like they could lift a truck but they yeah. can't they can't like you know touch their knees um, yeah and exactly. i'm trying to strike a balance now between the two you know right and i'm wondering whether the 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 vegan lifestyle also contributes to kind of having the best of both worlds yeah definitely definitely and funnily enough my ex-training partner i bumped into the then reigning mr universe uh and he saw how I was thriving and he decided to, to go vegan. He's been vegan 10 months and he's bigger and leaner than ever. And he's finding it so much easier. You know, when I used to diet eating chicken, I'd just be miserable. But now at the end of a diet, I end up on 500 grams of carbohydrate now. And I've just got so much energy. I feel so well and happy. Whereas before I'd be on a hundred grams of carbs, tons of protein, feeling like death, feeling miserable. Uh, and grumpy and grouchy and uh, it's just a world of difference and it feels e so much easier so much easier mm. i wonder if you if you uh chalked up those symptoms to just a really hard training regime like that's how you feel when you you know when you sacrifice to get what you want yeah i don't know i think it's all the acid and i don't know i train hard now but at the end of a training session now i feel like genuinely i could do it twice over i know not to because i know about bodybuilding and you go in hit it hard and then go home but i feel like i could do it twice it's 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 amazing i feel amazing i really do and that's why i want to show the world you know i want to bring it to the world right so so mr universe looked at you and went vegan yeah so tell us that partner, story a uh, former UK's strongest woman, Josie Keck, she had some health issues, so she was already going to go vegan for health reasons. So I guess they'd already looked into it, and he could see that it was viable. But like me, I was scared to try it because I thought I was going to lose all my gains. And same thing, funny enough, it was my partner, Gemma. She went vegan for health reasons. I saw she was thriving, and I thought, I want some of that. And just so I guess Barney saw that I was thriving. My PT clients are thriving as vegans. And he could see that it, it works, you know. And he overnight, then I saw him the next day and he said, I'd be a hypocrite not to go vegan myself. And now he's, again, showing the world. He's kind of on a crusade to, you know, save the planet, save the animals. You know, it's a beautiful thing. Hmm. And I've heard from a, from a whole bunch of vegan athletes. And these are people typically who, when, before they were vegan, weren't necessarily like at the top of of their game yeah and and and, then, and, they, yeah. But, and they said well you know like i'm struggling but but i'm i'm motivated to do it for health reasons or ethical reasons and yeah. i figure i'll have to take a hit like that'll be my sacrifice for the world yeah. and they said it turns out that being vegan was a competitive advantage yeah i've seen it so many times uh one of my um clients uh that our local football team norwich city football club they're in the premiership soccer division uh and the captain russell martin he came to me because he was thinking of looking into into veganism um i kind of twisted his arm and he went for it and he's he says all the testing they do you know with regards to fitness you know uh, anaerobic aerobic fitness power flexibility everything he's tests are up and up and he's he's truly thriving as well and he's a scottish international as well he's actually an international soccer player and he's he's thriving 
Mm. So what, what, do you, what do you notice when, or what did you notice, and what do you notice in your clients when they make the shift? First of all, do they, do they, do they go vegan like 100% or do they gradually shift? How, what does it look like? It's, when been a, it's been a bit of a mix. One thing I do is I offer a free PT session to anyone who does a two-week vegan challenge. Huh. And uh, I've had a lot of uptake on that. And 90% of those people have stuck to it because they felt so well. So I've had a lot of people actually just switch overnight. Wow, that's <laughs> that's yeah. such a great uh, marketing idea. Do pe- yeah. I mean, people well, come in like to prove you wrong. <laughs> do, do, do they ever like this can't work? Sorry, I, lo- I lost sound there. Say yeah. again. I'm wondering, did do like do people say, oh, "All right, I'll do it for two weeks for the free session," but this isn't going to yeah. work? Do they have like doubts, or do they? A couple, but most people are just willing to to give it a go. Really, I, th- I guess they can see that I'm thriving. Uh, former Mr. Universe is thriving. So I guess the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And if we can do it, like, why can, why will it not work for someone else, you know, who, who obviously doesn't need as much protein as myself or Mr. Universe, you know? Why wouldn't it work for him, I guess? Right. So, yeah, I guess um, maybe there's some sort of cultural divide. But in this, I'm, I'm really surprised because, at least in this country, in the in the martial arts circles that I travel in, um, that there is, you know, the paleo... Um, movement is so strong with you know people doing yeah. this crossfit it's 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 become a religion and to to question the you know the need for meat um doesn't get me very far in a lot of these circles yeah yeah i bet that people don't want to look at it do they they just we've been lied to for so long you know and um it's just ingrained isn't it but slowly the truth's coming out like you say this like we say this um champions now um you know the the ninja warrior series you know the tv show no are you aware of that no. so it's like a big obstacle course it's really crazy really hard okay um it started in japan and then went to america and now it started in the uk the first series the only guy to finish the course was a vegan tim sheaf 2009 buckley's world free running champion huh. and he was vegan you know and um Patrick Baboumian got his fourth world strongman title or strongman record. Um, There's so many now, and it's coming out. It's coming out. It's, it's. I think it's um it's growing exponentially. People are, are starting to see more and more, and I think it'll grow quicker and quicker. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, there's there's nothing like sports to um, to embrace what works. Because right, yeah. Because if you're talking about people, you know, reversing their diabetes or not getting cancer, it's unclear. It, there's a lot of factors. Yeah. It can take years. But if someone all of a sudden, you know, boosts boosts their performance, everyone yeah. wants to know what they did, right? Exactly, exactly. And the, the big question all the time, the first question you ever get, where do you get your protein? Hmm. You know, and just if we can see that the biggest people in the world, you know, can be vegan. You know, that's that's the big one out of the way, like from the word go, isn't it? You know, right. So, uh, t- tell us what you eat now. Um, so I eat mostly free. I'd say seventy-five percent free. So kind of raw till four. I mostly eat fruit through the day. In the evening, I'll have a cooked starch-based meal. Um, sometimes like brown rice or quinoa often potato, sweet potato, a lot of vegetables, a lot of legumes in the evening. Um, Through the day, I do have a little protein powders in my fruit smoothies, um, which I'm not too... I'd like to really eat completely whole foods, but I found mixing beans and things in with fruit smoothies, it wasn't the best for my stomach. Mm. So I'm using vegan protein powders, only three scoops a day, Compare that with like 10 scoops of whey and casein that I used to have every day. You know, I'm, I'm kind of the 80 10 10 rule, so uh-huh. no more than about 10% of my calories from protein and, and still thriving. So I don't think there's a need to overload on protein. Uh huh. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and so it's. Uh, I, you go ahead. Sorry, go on. Um, well, I eat lots of greens as well. I eat a pound of leafy greens a day. Uh, and overt fats, I'll have uh, three tablespoons of either chia or flax seeds. Um, and yeah, that's about, uh, it's about the measure of it. Mm-hmm. And how active are you? So I'm PTing all the time. I've also got a YouTube channel, so I'm shooting lots of videos. Lots of them are quite physical. 
when I was training with uh, Barney Duplessis, former Mr. Universe, uh, we were training two hours a night. I think that's a little excessive for most people. And so I've just cut that back to an hour, four times a week now. But high intensity training, so just maximum weights every week, you know, getting stronger and still real intense training. So I need good nutrition to support that. Gotcha. So, so yeah. some of the photos on your website are are quite touching, showing you with a dog, I think with a horse. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it seems like there's a there's a there's a different kind of masculinity that you're portraying now than yeah. than maybe when you were you know in your twenties and working yeah. as, as a doorman. Can you talk about the, the what it what it means to you to be you know a hench herbivore to be a man who can show compassion? Yeah, I just want to show the world like a different way. And when I wanted to be big and strong, it was from a place of fear. Um, and I know I can look after myself now. Like I've been there and done that. I don't feel the need to do it. And through veganism, I found, I guess, like I suppose you would call it a spiritual awakening. I saw the, what animals have to go through in order for us, you know, to have a meal from them. And I was disgusted and I felt horrible. I thought we had to do that. So I didn't look at it before. Now I realize we don't have to do that. Um, and I thought if I don't want to harm cows and pigs and fish, Humans also are animals, so why do I want to, you know, get wrong with people? So if someone is rude to me now, I don't bite, I don't rear up. I just, I just, if they're being off with me, I'll, I'll thank them for their perspective, hmm. um, and I'll try. I'll just walk away. I just, there's a better way. Like we need, to, as a species, if we're going to survive, like we've been at war, ninety-five percent of recorded human history. We need to be kind to each other. We need to find a different way, and through veganism. You know, I've I found a more spiritual way and a more positive way. And I think that's where we all need to go. And I, I, th I truly think veganism could save the world. You know, I really believe that. Hmm. It's interesting because I've always thought that, you know, human beings, we, we don't have enough empathy for animals. But the truth yeah. is, I think we, we have more empathy for animals than we do yeah. for our fellow humans. Yeah, we just don't, you know, slaughterhouses don't have glass walls you know there's pick your own strawberries there's not slaughter your own animals and i think if people knew <laughs> most people wouldn't want a part of it i really believe that and then now as long as people know that we're not meant to eat animal and that it's not doing us good i think one day we'll have a vegan majority in fact i'd bet my life on it mm. now we're, we're we're talking about being vegan because that's that's very uh, clearly how you present yourself. In, in general, I talk for when I'm talking as a, a health educator about being plant based. So I want to yeah. be, be clear that you're when, you, when you're talking about veganism, it, it's very much about a, a health promoting diet and way of yeah. life. Right. Yet. So, um, so me meaning, you know, as you said, the fruits, the uh, legumes, the whole, whole plant yeah. foods, as opposed to, uh, you know, kind of just junk foods. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, since since I made the change, you know, my eyesight is more than twice as, as strong. Uh, I've no more tendonitis from training. I've cured my hay fever. Um, my partner, Gemma, she's pretty much symptom-free from her autoimmune thyroid disease that she suffered with. Um, and with my clients, you know, they reverse type 2 diabetes, um, 20 years of osteoarthritis, that guy's pretty much pain free now. If he has a slip up, he went to a couple of weddings recently and didn't eat the best and had a bit to drink. And he was in pain in his joints and things. Hmm. But when he sticks to it, a whole foods plant based diet, he, you know, he's pretty much pain free and he's over the moon. You know, for 20 years he put up with extreme pain. So, yeah, I believe it's the, the way forward for health, definitely. Yeah, and it's and it's it's so interesting that you know so I know so many people who are just in chronic pain and they're they're not eating yeah. particularly well and they they can't make the connection. There's no need to put up with it, and you know as far as I knew, like my health was okay. I mean, obviously, if you're eating animals, you are getting off um, atherosclerosis and things. But outwardly, I felt well. But I saw I read the China study and, and other books and got into listening to Dr. Michael Greger mm -hmm. and I realized and I thought I don't want these diseases and things so but there are people suffering with those diseases who aren't interested they just want to eat their rubbish food and I guess like it's comfort eating and 
They're right. doing so much apathy because of a poor diet. I guess they can't be bothered to do anything about it. I don't know. Well, also, I think when you, you know when you you talk about kind of going people doing it um, extreme for fourteen days, that there's something very clarifying about making a big shift as opposed yeah. to someone says, "Well, I'll eat a little more broccoli, but I don't feel much better." You know, yeah. small differences don't lead to uh, big differences. Yeah. That was my thought pattern. I thought if people can do it for two weeks, I'm sure they're going to feel some big benefits. You know. Being able to go to the toilet for some people, I, I've known people to say, like, oh, I'll go to the toilet once a week. And I think, you know, colon cancers, colorectal cancers are so prevalent. And, um, you know, the fact that they can go to the loo after every meal and not be in agony, I, I hope that they'll see the light. And like I say, nine out of ten of these people who have done it have stuck to it. Wow, that's that's a that's a great success rate. Yeah. Um, and I guess people are coming to you are not necessarily motivated to go vegan they they see it as a, as a means to an end they want something else that you have yeah i mean half of my clients still are actually omnivorous i don't turn away omnivores but i think they will have issues and i'll they'll be in a bit of pain and i'll tell them how well i got rid of my pain by eating a plant-based diet and yeah you can then affect people can't you you know you can be a an influence on them yeah no that's that's great um, so tell, tell me more about, um, this, this, this idea of, of compassion, of read, read, re, you know, it's, it's almost like what you said was that your um, be, being big and strong was coming from a place of fear and yeah. what, what, the spiritual, what, what's the replaced spiritual the fear? Teachers will say that everything you do boils down to either love or fear they're the two great sort of emotions and there are other emotions that branch off of that but if you boil it down it's love or fear what's the difference in your experience of of making decisions and living your life out of fear as opposed to love so if someone's trying to be a pain or aggressive towards you it's easier to especially for me being a bigger guy it's easy for me to use intimidation to get angry you know, to sh shout and, but it just, it's not nice for me. It's raising my cortisol this, you know, before when I was a doorman and, you know, there could be some sort of pretty extreme situations and, you know, I could end up striking someone and then I'll be worrying for like the next month, am I going to be arrested hmm. or in a public, more public situation and someone's rude and you know, I might sort of snap at them. And then if they weren't scared and they sort of bit back and I and you can't strike the person, and then that would be going over and over in my mind for, like, up to six months. And I'd think, oh, that guy was so rude. Like, how dare he? Like, can't he say how big I am? Like, you know, I should have hit that guy. And that would be going around in my head. And now I recognise if someone's rude to me, you know, inside they're suffering and their suffering's spilling over and I'm getting some of that suffering. And I can add to that, or I can just let it go. And again, I, I can just say, you know, thank you for your perspective. Um, I can just walk away from things now. I learned kind of through meditation when you're trying to clear your mind, and it's like clouds come past, different thoughts, different emotions, and you can latch on to those and pay them notice, and then, it, you know, you're not doing what you're trying to do. Or you can just let them drift past. And now if someone's rude to me, if someone sticks their finger up at me, that's, it's not anything, is it? There's nothing that has any meaning except that which you attach to it. So it's not affected. I just choose not to latch onto that thought, and I just carry on about my day, and I am just a 100 times happier, you know? And why, if you can help it, why add negative energy into the world? That's just, if we can't say something nice, say nothing at all, but just where we can, just try to be kind to people. So I'm always looking for opportunities now to random acts of kindness, paying it forward, selfless service, call it what you will. But it, the best feeling is to do a kindness for someone. Um, so it's just um, everyone's a winner. Yeah, and I, I can really feel the difference where it's no longer fear-based, right? So if you're yeah. you're this big guy, but your, your uh, operating system is this we weedy teenager who's worried about getting picked on, yeah. you, your, your strength is, uh, is an illusion. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, bang on. Yeah, so do you still do martial arts? 
Um, I'm not at the moment. I was doing some. I had a, a really good uh, sort of MMA coach, and we were doing all sorts of bits. But um, he then couldn't train me because he got a new job. And as I said, I bumped into the then Mr. Universe, uh, and he said, do you want to be my training buddy? Because I showed him the vegan thing, and he was so grateful, and he wanted to do a kindness to me. And, you know, that's a chance of a lifetime. So I got heavily back into the bodybuilding got a lot bigger than I really meant to and also I did have knee surgery a while ago a torn meniscus uh, and they didn't do it right so it can pop out of joint if I'm unlucky so I've been careful not to really grapple or do groundwork and throws and things so I really need to have that redone but funny enough when they first did the surgery it was 18 months and it wasn't recovering at all I couldn't do anything kick in anything the minute I went vegan which was for you know like a different reason but because of the anti-inflammatory properties I can do most things, you know, I'm doing heavy squats and leg presses and I was kicking and boxing and things and moving around and pain free. Whereas, as I say, for 18 months, it just didn't recover after the surgery. So, um, yeah, I've got a lot to thank veganism for. I really have. Right. So the, the, the reason I wanted to know about uh, martial arts is I wonder if your if your experience of competing changed because I, you know, in a lot of martial arts there's kind of a, uh, an aggression factor and yeah. whether whether it, it became different whether it was more partnership and sort of play yeah. when i know what you mean i never actually competed in any of the martial arts i did i always really just did them for for reality for self-protection uh -huh. and i always figured there's too many rules in uh, all the different <laughs> sports and the stuff they take out you know oftentimes that's the stuff that works <laughs> so uh yeah i didn't want to compete and then put myself in a a bad spot for instance uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu you know amazing technical wizardry but you can negate most of it by just putting in a, a bite so yeah. <laughs> i didn't really want to leave myself open to that sort of thing right but you know so in, in my experience and i certainly don't compete on any level but even yeah. um you know working with friends during class there are yeah. moments when i can feel my ego flaring up and i'm like i want to beat them yeah <laughs> i'm with you and uh yeah yeah i've still got that aggression there and you know it's there if i really needed it but um i don't think i'll manifest situations where i need it anymore just simply because you know they're not a, a match to me anymore right right and yet and yet um you know there's a there's a wonderful martial arts tradition of the warrior and yeah. um you know how, how do you think of of being a warrior now that you have you know you have so yeah. bigger things to and defend some, than your ego. Yeah, I mean, my, my, like, I keep talking about him, but my friend Barney, former Mr. Universe, when he first trained with me, he said to me, I'll be willing to die for something I believe in. And I thought, well, that's easy, you know, that's big, but that's easy to say these things. But actually, I, I saw him compete at the 2015 Pro Universe Championships. And the judging was taking a while. And I said, oh, well, just the MC will have a chat with the bodybuilders while we're deliberating. And in front of like a thousand, I mean, I was probably the smallest guy there. There was a lot of very big, you know, meathead uh, type bodybuilders there. Uh, and the MC said, oh, you know, how long have you been preparing and et cetera? And Barney said, oh, eight months ever since I turned vegan. And just in that auditorium in front of all those people, <laughs> you know, who historically would really look down upon a vegan and probably be quite cruel. I really believed that he would die for his cause. I, that really impressed me. That's one of the bravest things I've ever done. I've ever seen. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Right. I, I was I was taking a workshop in, in in my martial art, which is a Russian form, which is which is not an art. It it really is you know defense. Yeah. And we, we learn all the you know places to pinch and poke and yeah. all the all the dirty tricks. And yeah. w in, in the in the workshop, the leader was was telling a story about some of his students were like, okay, so we we understand we're supposed to be nonviolent. We're supposed to like you know use this for good and get along with people but like yeah. when do you, you know when can we jump into action like this is well, what, what yeah. do you mean like when when can when do we fight when can we fight like what do they have to say yeah. so, so, <laughs> it's like if yeah. you're not fighting to defend your family or your country what are you doing yeah i yeah. find like i don't really have to think about it too much i know how to like avoid conflict and then control a situation if i have to but if it comes down to it, I know my body will just do it. I don't have to sort of quantify it in my mind. My body will just react when it needs to, you know. If um, pre-fight, 
I, in self-protection, I talk about like a pre-fight interview and a would-be assailant will be sort of trying to suss you out. So we'll be talking to you to see if you're intimidated and, mm. you know, you'll know. You'll know when he's about to strike. So, and I say be first, you know, well, you know, because action beats reaction. But um, if a guy knows you're switched on and you can see you're confident, nine times out of ten, they they don't go for it, do they? You know, they're they're, they're cowards, basically. Right. Well, you know, why 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 break into the car with the with, with the best alarm system? Exactly. <laughs> cool. So, um, your your clients, some of them um, want to be like you know bodybuilders, or and are most of them just interested in fitness? To be honest, it's mostly kind of health. So just getting in shape, uh, some disease reversal, but mostly just to be well and functioning. I guess when I was younger and I was a lot bigger and more into bodybuilding, I did attract bodybuilders, but not so much now. And I don't want to. Like Again, to me, that feels a bit like ego now. And I want people to feel well and function and you know live to a ripe old age and still be moving around and that that brings me my joy so that's uh i think that's what i'm meant to be doing now that's great so so i we're, we're talking because i heard you on uh, bbc world service news hour yeah. and i was yeah up, that was a bit of a shock <laughs> so i was i was up early in the morning doing my thing you know i turned on the news i forget why turned on the radio but yeah. you know, generally, it it just depresses me. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, me but, too. I don't really watch the TV or listen to the radio. <laughs> but but there was there was they were talking about you know first Arnold Schwarzenegger saying that we should eat less meat, and then yeah. they interviewed you, and I'm just I just like lay down on the floor like like I was dizzy, like I could you know <laughs> like like I'd eaten something toxic because I couldn't believe what was coming out of my radio. Yeah. So how did you yeah. get, how did you get hooked up with going to a global audience of of tens or hundreds of millions of people so um they contacted my friend barney uh, the ex mr universe and he's um i think he was busy he's he's done a few interviews and and like myself often I, i'm I've historically not been good on camera or as a as a lad on a radio interview i once really froze and felt like an idiot and so i've had a kind of phobia of it and money has been doing stuff but I, he's been kicking himself afterwards and saying oh, i didn't say this i didn't say that i'm really annoyed with myself mm. so we sort of got fed up with doing it but he knows you know obviously i'm so passionate about it and i want to get the message out uh, and so he he put the guy on to me and i thought to myself i had 30 minutes really to get to the radio station and I thought, oh, should I get nervous? And I thought, no, this is too important. I'm just going to do it. And <laughs> yeah, luckily, I think it came out all right. <laughs> right. So, what 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 were they interested in, in in the interview? What 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 was newsworthy to them? So it was just like getting another opinion on, you know, what do you think about Arnold saying this? Um, and also, they wanted to know, is it viable for a bodybuilder, you know, to to eat a plant based diet? Mm. And ha ha what what happened sort of off off air? Were they uh, you know were they skeptical? Were they shot when they weren't being professional journalists? To, to be honest, I got to the radio station and I was just in a booth. Um, so I'm in a little city called Norwich, uh, and then I was on a direct line to London. Uh -huh. So I didn't really see anyone oh, apart okay. from the girl who sort of let me in. Um, so I didn't really speak to anyone um, after that. Wow, it's a, it's, a, it's a strange world where you can walk into a, a room, have the door closed, and then yeah. people all around I the world. I didn't know. I thought it was the local radio station. Oh. If not, I might have gone a bit more nervous. <laughs> and then I looked up yesterday and I saw 188 million uh, listeners um, a, a week on the world service. So luckily I didn't know that <laughs> before I started. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an, it's another you know great example of the uh, you know losing the ego in the service of something bigger, right? I I, yeah. I can only imagine how nervous I would have been, but you sounded great, like you were just speaking very informally and from the heart about uh, your experience. Yeah, I guess it's my truth. It's what I'm passionate about and what I believe in. So I didn't stop to think, oh, am I nervous? It just all came piling out. It's, it's the stuff I say day in day out you know i've been saying it for the last three years so yeah good good subject matter for me i guess <laughs> great <laughs> has, has your life changed since then aside from from me reaching out have other people uh been become interested yeah, in your story a few people things were going well for me anyway i've been really blowing up on my youtube channel and uh, that was going well and anyway, i was featured on a couple of 
sort of bigger channels and that's that's still going well um yeah just business as usual really i've had a couple of new client sort of inquiries but um yeah it was all going well in any case so uh yeah and long may it continue awesome long <laughs> long may it continue and uh what what are your plans do you have uh any, anything crystallized, like big projects, uh, hopes and dreams, books, anything you're, uh, you're dreaming of um, or starting? It's really, it's really the YouTube channel. So, you know, I, I decided at the start of the year to advertise as a vegan PT rather than as a mainstream. And it was, you know, follow my head. You know, I might risk not getting enough clients or follow my heart. And, the, you know, to me, it's disease reversing and protective and and someone once told me, a very spiritual person told me that they'd got like a message, which I've heard is called channeling and from spirit saying that I was meant to be a healer. And his job as a guide is to tell me, but I already knew because it, it always brought me my joy to help people with their health. Hmm. And that, it resonated with me. And I, and I knew that was the path I was meant to be on. So I did the vegan PT thing. We had a bit of disease reversal among a few people. And I thought to myself, I was really pleased, but I thought this isn't enough. I don't want to help a handful of people. I want to help the world. And so I started my YouTube channel um, like about a year ago. And we're now going to get up probably 100,000 views within the first year. And uh, yeah, I just I think I'll just do that, to be honest. Um, keep up the PT, but bring out videos and show successes and a lot of people say oh what do i actually eat and i got so fed up just trying to learn out the same spiel and having to type it all out on you know if it, internet sort of based inquiries so i thought well i'll just make a channel and, and show everyone and i can just point at that now hmm. and what what have you learned from doing the videos and getting feedback because uh you, you youtube can be a very s strange place to get comments on your videos yeah, I've not had a lot of really negative ones. Sometimes people, you know, especially if they're a butcher or something, or if they're giving their child milk because they think that they're meant to and they don't feel like you're attacking them, they can be rude and things. But again, I thank them for their perspective. And then I link videos or places on my website with like the comparative anatomy chart. Um, again, I just don't get drawn into arguments. I just say, well, for me, this is you know my truth and then i just point them in that direction and it saves getting into arguments and things and they can take it or leave it you know hopefully at some point you know they might look at it you know right and what, what sort of helpful feedback have you gotten about the sorts of things that people enjoy in the videos whether it's content or, or style or technical things how, how have you developed as a youtube I think, artist <laughs> i think they like the more um kind of vlogs and things and real you know, oftentimes I've tried to script and talk about in depth about nutrition and supplementation and they do quite well. But Gemma said to me, people are more into like reality TV and things, which I never was. Hmm. But actually kind of day in the life stuff and vlogging and showing, you know, going to different places to eat and hanging out with friends and just talking about different, you know, vegan subjects. Uh, I think people get invested in you as a person and they like to see what you're getting up to and they want to see your cats and uh you know, I don't understand it, but people <laughs> like it, and and but they're so grateful and and lovely to me, and you know, I really I really appreciate them. That's great. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> so so I did a quick look up of Norwich, and yeah. the population is under one hundred and fifty thousand. The the um, the district is the one hundred and forty fourth most populous district in in England. I'm learning stuff now. <laughs> well, thank you, Wikipedia. But <laughs> you know, I would I would think that being a vegan um, PT would yeah. would would limit the market. You found that it, even in Norwich, there is there's enough yeah. interest. There's... It's really booming. Veganism is really booming. I've heard it's one of the fastest growing sectors in the world. Uh, the start of the year, there were 10 million hashtag vegan or vegan hashtags on um, Instagram, it's now close to 20 million. 10% um, of my gym has gone vegan. And, you know, if we can convince bodybuilders to go vegan, then I think we can convince anyone. And I guess I'm niche, you know, there's no one else really doing it. So everyone's coming to me. Awesome. Well, you can get 10% 10, 10 of uh, 140,000. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad odds. <laughs> 
Awesome. Well, Paul Curtin, Hench Herbivore, it's, it, it's great talking to you. It's great getting a sense of, of your journey, of your spirit, um, of the, you know, the, the gentleness that, um, that goes along with being a warrior for the planet, for the animals, yeah. and for human health. And I'm uh, very grateful that you took the time to join us oh, here today. Thank you, Howard. I'm really uh, honored that you, that you had me on your podcast. All right. Well, be well. You too, my friend. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Plant Yourself podcast. If you're new to the show, you can catch archived episodes at plantyourself.com. There's over 136 other episodes that are sitting right there for your listening pleasure. If you'd like to support the show, one way to do so is to leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher so that other folks who are searching for something like it will find it and maybe give a listen. You can also support the show financially by becoming a patron or making a one-time donation, and those options are available at plantyourself.com on every page on the right sidebar. You'll see the buttons there. That would really help.